Joining us now in Studio B, Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, national champion at BYU, dual threat analyst. Blaine, welcome back. What up, Blaine? First and foremost, man, yeah. what what's your Halloween costume tonight? I guess it's a surprise. I mean, if you want to see, you're gonna have to go to the trunk or treat. Oh, okay. That's why we have to have Are the you show earlier. The trunk or treat? Oh, I'll be there. Oh, I'm excited. So you, yeah, that's why we have to have the shows earlier so we can all get over to the trunk or treat. The the costumes require a little time. Yeah, yeah. I like Gavin's costume. He actually wore it to team meetings. So wow. I'm not gonna tell what it is, but I'm just interested to see what Ty Detmer thinks about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> That's oh, quite the yes. tease. This That's is fantastic. You know you, want, you know you want in on that. And good news. You can see all of those costumes, courtesy of our BYU Sports Spooktacular. Two hours tonight, starting at 7 Eastern. And we're going to have different costumes, by the way. Not, not these ones. We're gonna morning, have... morning edition right here with Jimmer. Yeah. They, we mailed it in with this, but uh, we're not mailing it in Well, this we afternoon. had to build up we to have the Amazon. better costume. We have Amazon Prime this afternoon. Exactly. Yes, we yeah, do. Tonight. Blaine, BYU football on offense at moments had Amazon Prime working for them on Saturday. What was the stark difference for the Cougars against San Jose State? I, I think they got a little confidence earlier, and, and they pushed the ball up the field more. And so Tanner threw the ball out there. He made some better throws on deep balls. And guys made plays on the ball. And so all of a sudden, when you're throwing it over the top, it, it's easier to do everything else. And, you know, we talked last week about – having K.J. Hall in, the explosiveness that he brings uh, to the, not just the run game but to the pass game when he's coming out of the backfield, I thought that that made a huge difference. And so I'm really interested to see if he's going to be available for Fresno State because now the, the talent level that BYU will face this Saturday is significantly higher. And this Fresno State team is a very good defense. It's a top 20 defense. They certainly could use number 24 out there with his ability to take just a little seam and, and get a home run for you. That it, He is a big, big um, boost when he's in that offense, but they've just struggled to keep him healthy. I mean, think what he did in a half in this game. He had a huge impact on the game and just played the first half, basically. Beggars can't be choosers, but I want to ask this question. How much of Saturday was San Jose just stinks, or BYU actually woke up on offense? Will we see this offense continue to be good against Fresno State? It's, it's a little bit of both because San Jose State's not good defensively. We know that. We knew that coming in. But so. neither was ECU. No, you're right. And so did the offense take a step forward? They did. And they had some early success. And with that early success, they got confidence. So the ball starts coming out a little bit faster. Guys start making plays. And when you play with confidence, you play fast. And that, that's the key. And so you hope that that confidence they had um, at the end of that game carries over and they play with a little bit of, you know, a little quicker, a little faster, make decisions more confidently, get the ball out, go attack the football. If they can do that, then they got a chance against Fresno State. And I've said this all year. The, most of the teams, most of the losses this year against teams where BYU's matched up fine physically. You know, they, they, they're better than Utah State physically. They were better than East Carolina physically. Uh, they finally win this one against San Jose State where they're better physically. They were similar to Utah physically. Now, Mississippi State, LSU, Wisconsin, they, they didn't match up physically with those teams. And so they, they didn't hang in there because they didn't execute. And physically, they weren't good enough to match up. With those three exceptions, they, they've been able to match up. Now, they'll match up just fine with Fresno State. Fresno State's not going to be bigger, faster, stronger. So it becomes playing with confidence, playing with a little bit of swagger, you know, so, so that they are confident and they're aggressive and they push the ball upfield. They have to do that because this Fresno State team, they're a pretty confident defensive football team. They're top 20 in scoring and yards, which is pretty wild considering they played Alabama and Washington. The line opened at Fresno State as an 11-point favorite. It's up to 15. That's yeah. a pretty wild line. And, and this is a, like that line would have seemed right to me before I watched them just play UNLV. They lost by 10. How did that happen? It, UNLV played keep away with them. UNLV got in their offense. Like in the second quarter of that football game, UNLV never gave them the ball. UNLV had the ball over 11 minutes in the second That's quarter crazy. of the game. That's <laughs> crazy. And so, so when a team keeps the ball from you, and they only got two field goals out of it, but it was – it set back Fresno State's offense so much like they just weren't out on the field. And so Fresno State never got in a groove after that. So UNLV, it was a great game plan. They weren't real aggressive, but they just kind of hammered it at them. And it, and it wasn't about going out and scoring 40 and outscoring Fresno State. It was like, we're going to keep the football. We're going to pound it at them. We're going to run it. We're going to spread them out. And we're going to not let them have the ball. And 
the, the game plan was masterful, and Fresno State just seemed out of sorts. From the second quarter on, they seemed out of sorts. And they, they had some terrible errors where they snapped the ball over the punter's head and gave UNLV a short field. But even with that, they only got a field goal out of it. Um, they, they fumbled deep in their own territory. So they made some mistakes that cost them in this one. But, but this is not a team that BYU can't match up with physically. Um, and, so, and they're coming off of a game where they got to be going, whoa, we were so good and so dominant against San Diego State. You know, we, we, we really feel like we've made great progress. Now they're asking themselves, well, what just went wrong there? Is this an aberration or, or, or what's the deal? And so I think for BYU, if they can play a little keep away in the first uh, quarter. Yes, and that's where I wanted to go next. What's the game plan for BYU after an aggressive performance going to Fresno State? They've got to be smart. They can't turn the ball over. They've got to be able to run it a little bit. In the pass game, they've got to control it. So throw throws that – even if you only throw a three-yard throw that's a high per completion percentage and you get four yards out of it, that's okay. That's as good as a first down run. And so I think patience is important here. And then you got to take some shots to loosen them up. This is a, a team, Fresno, that has a good front – their strength defensively is they're very good at linebacker. And, you know, it's a team that's aggressive. They get after you. They get tackles for loss. They get sacks. So take care of the football. Keep the football. And, and have them start to go after the first quarter. Man, like, what is going on here? Like, this is just an extension of this UNLV game that we had last week at home. Are we really as good as we thought we were? And uh, so – and they – you know, they're, they're pretty quick defensively. So BYU's got to make sure they don't force the ball into places that they shouldn't, don't take chances that they shouldn't. And I think ball control is the key here. Uh, you know, take care of the football. And then defensively, they run the, the spread, read option, contain the quarterback run game. Make him be a, a thrower in the pocket and not let him run around and hurt you with his feet. Those are the, that, that's the game plan going into this one. BYU's played that game before, Mississippi State, right? Yeah, but it, they didn't play it that well. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing. But, but, hey, Fresno State's good. They don't have the speed, the team speed that Mississippi State has on both sides of the ball. All right, Blaine. Fantastic All stuff. right, guys. We look forward to your costume tonight at the BYU Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat, I'll be BYU there. BYU Sports. You may, you may not even recognize me. Spooktacular. Oh, wow, that much. Can't wait. Man, some effective teasing, Blaine. <laughs> you're, such, you're such a tease, Blaine. It's like you've done television before <laughs> for 29 years or whatever it is. <laughs>